So welcome back to another Abingdon Marathon training series video and this is week four. And that means two things are happening this week. Number one, we have a race on Saturday and number two, it's the very first marathon pace session. It wasn't meant to be, but we're bringing it forward and I'll explain why when we're out there on the session that you're about to see today. Very excited to share it. And of course, it's always good fun getting stuck in to some marathon pace work to see where fitness is at and see how things are going. And in terms of beyond that, after that, we'll talk all about how I'm working out my marathon pace uh, in terms of what I'm planning to run at Abingdon, why I'm going for that sort of pace range and what that means for my training. But first of all, we'll jump to the workout. You can see how it went and then we'll get back here and talk all about it. So good morning and welcome to the main event. Here we go. Let's get into it. First marathon specific session of the block. And what do we have on the cards today? Three by 2K and six by 1K. The three by two Ks are a marathon effort. Well, pace actually, I'm gonna try and hit pace. So eight weeks out, we're gonna hit pace, see how it feels. And then the six by K are just faster. No set pace for those, just whatever I feel comfortable to pick it up to. So positive mental talk has been a really big thing for me over the summer and, and at the moment, just telling myself what I think I can do. So let me tell you what I hope to achieve, but also a realistic uh, thing, I guess, that's happened. And that thing that's happened is I'm very underfueled. Um, simple reason being, I eat pretty carefully during the day of a double, which is yesterday. And I don't eat a vast amount. I try and eat very clean food because my stomach is not very, uh, is not very good. But I ended up having to wait until 8.20 last night to get out for my second easy run um, just because of summer holidays quite frankly and uh, so yeah I didn't eat a lot in the day and then by the time I got back it just got nine o'clock I couldn't eat a vast amount because I wanted to get to bed early to get up early for this one so I do feel a little bit under fuel, but I have fueled quite well this morning with a big maltodextrin drink, ketone IQ and uh, a bit of gluten-free toast so I feel okay but I'm very aware that in myself I don't feel the most energetic and um, goals for the session though what I'd love to achieve in terms of marathon pace is around 555 to 6 flat so at Newport last year when I ran 240 flat um, I held I did three mile effectively kind of like moderate warm-up into it and then I did two blocks of 10 miles the first block of 10 mile I had averaged I think it was like 602 603 per mile the second block I tried to quick uh, kick on which took me up to 23 miles and I think I averaged 559 um, and that was when I was in really good shape and then obviously the last few miles have faded a bit so I know that I can hold in and around six flat pace and obviously I feel fitter than I do in the last or did in the last block so I'm going to aim for realistically I'd like to aim for around 555 but I'd be happy of somewhere between 555 and 605 I don't really want to go to 605 but 555 to 6 would be would be ideal so that's that's the goal for the the 3 by 2 k and then the 1Ks will just be whatever I can manage and so just before we get into this I want to say a massive thanks to Say Skype for sponsoring this week's video, the training series leading up to Abingdon Marathon. I really appreciate their support. I'm wearing one of their racing singlets. This is one of the newer ones uh, that they sent me in the last drop. So grateful. If I move here and point over here, you'll see FOD Runner 15 appear. That gets you guys 15% discount off of all Say Sky items. Kit check today, as I said, the Flow singlet, which is one of their newer ones. We're wearing the combat shorts with, as I always say, the iPhone 12 Pro Max in the pocket. Shows how big the pockets are. Uh, just some normal training socks and then the Adios Pro 3. Loving their kit and I'll be racing in it this weekend at the Podium 5K in Cardiff. So I'm excited to share that vlog and share with you guys the racing kit that I'll be using there. So if you're interested in any Say Sky kit, you guys know I love it. I know a lot of you guys love it too. Don't forget, FOD Runner 15 gets you guys 15% discount. Seven twenty-four for that first two k, five fifty-eight per mile. Basically, an LT one rep. All good. The watch said seven twenty-two for that one, which is five fifty-six per mile, I think, or five fifty-five. Really good. The difference between the LT one reps and these is that I'm trying to hit pace. And normally on those ones coming back up this way where it's uphill, I back off and just work to effort so the paces would drop slightly. But I'm trying to hold pace. 
so effort was slightly more on that one it should relax back down on this last one Seven seventeen for that last one, five fifty-two per mile. So a touch quick, but felt good. Now let's see what we have left for the six by K. First one. Right, first two done, both of them 323, um, which I think is 527 per mile, which is way faster than I thought. But it feels good. Number three. Number three. Three twenty-two for Rectory and four. Yeah, this has gone better than expected. Here we go, number five. Two more. There we go, 321 and then 320 or 321 for that last one. Really happy with that, I did not expect, uh, well if I'm honest, I was thinking in my head late 320s, early 330s for those K reps, didn't think I could pick it up that much but yeah, really happy with that. And a big thanks to my daughter for coming out and getting some clips uh, on the bike and running. I uh, really appreciate the bike had a flat tyre, so she had to do a lot of running, bless her. But uh, no, I really appreciate that. And uh, what does this session tell me? Obviously, I'm eight weeks and four days out. First marathon session. Um, I'm in a good place. Fitness is in a good place. It's now about fine tuning it. So obviously that was only 6K worth of work around marathon pace. And granted, that last rep was a bit quick, but uh, but then to kick on for another 6K that much faster in the 520s, um, very, very pleasing. I think it's uh, really, it's exactly where the double threshold work has been, has been uh, paying dividends because those paces were in and around those areas and I just felt strong. So yeah, I can't wait to start extending this out over the next few weeks. Good first one in the books. So pleasantly surprised, I think, is the best way for me to put that. Really, really happy. Obviously, I haven't done that sort of volume session uh, in a while. The fart leg workouts I have been doing over the last two or three weeks um, have been gradually increasing in duration, but we're still not at the level of running. I think the session ended up being just over eight miles. So it was really good uh, to get that sort of quality in there. 12K worth of good quality work, six of it a marathon effort, and then six slightly faster. And really, honestly, and truthfully, I had no idea that I was gonna hit those sorts of paces for the 1K reps. I really thought I'd be in and around the 5.30s per mile. So to hit those paces was really, really encouraging. And I suppose at this stage, obviously there's plenty more marathon pace workouts to come with a lot more marathon pace in them, but this seemed to be a good start. Now let's dive into talking about marathon pace and
and how I'm working out what I'm going to be running at Abingdon. Now, I did allude to it in the workout video, so you will have seen what I wanted to try and target in and around that 555 uh, to six flat range per mile, which I think comes in and around like a 236 to 238 marathon. That would be a dream, that would be ideal. Now, how I've come to that, I know I ran Abingdon at that pace, so that gives me a good idea as to where I could maybe kick on to. I don't want to take too big a leap now, but of course we'll see as training goes. I'm not going to adjust my training, I'm not going to go and do one workout and go, oh well that felt too easy, I'm going to adjust my paces. I never ever recommend changing your paces during uh, marathon training. I always advocate when you get to race day and you start at that pace, if it feels too slow, then gently work through the gears as the race goes on, then that gives you a massive confidence boost. But I feel like I've done it in the past, I've changed my goal pace because I've had a good workout or two and it's just ended up in disaster when it comes to marathon day. So there's a couple of factors that I like to take into consideration. Number one, heart rate, and number two, previous data. I'm going to look back at Newport because London this year uh, was an absolute disaster. And I have to remember, a lot of you guys subscribed um, during that London Marathon training series and after, so you won't have followed the Newport Marathon journey before. And all I'll say to that is, I don't want to keep going over old ground, but of course, with the illness that I had and then coming off the back of that, I wasn't training uh, the best that I could. I feel like, well, my heart rate was naturally elevated and I just couldn't put in the effort. Uh, now, like I think about the workout I've done today, I could not have done that during that London block. I was absolutely wiped out. So I'm casting back uh, to the block before where I ran that 240 and 44 seconds. Now I don't run to heart rate, but I do study my heart rate when I get back from my runs. And what I found over the years of doing marathons, because I think if I'm right in saying this is my 11th marathon now, one I've run solo and I've done 10 official ones, nine road and one trail, um, is basically if I start in the 160s, I blow up very quickly. My heart rate drifts up and if I get close to that threshold, which is getting towards the top end of the 160s, low 170s, if I hit that way too early, that's game over uh, for the marathon. Like if I roll back to London this year, I don't want to talk about it, but if I roll back to London this year, my heart rate was super low, like really low. And that showed that I didn't have the energy to put in the effort that I knew I had in me, but my heart rate had come back down to relatively normal parameters. And I think the average for that run was 155 or six, it was 150 mid which is ridiculous for a marathon. So I knew that I could push more. Now Newport is my gold standard. That's what I want to replicate during this one. And I took that as a case of starting off three miles moderate. So just warming into, I think around like a 6.30 per mile, a 6.19 and a 6, oh, a low 16 something before then locking in uh, to those low six miles. And effectively the first mile was heart rate was around 140 something and then it just crept into the 150s and I sat in the 150s for a good period of time before then getting up into the 160s and I found that in the last three miles yes I did kind of bonk towards the end not a lot though only dropped 20 seconds a mile which is decent in my books uh, and that again comes down to me not being able to get that last gel on board however I got nowhere near my threshold but at the same time I wasn't running too uh, conservative either it was literally the sweet spot so that's what I'm going to be gauging uh, this Abingdon training block on and I'm going to be analyzing the data from the reps that I'm doing here when I get back and seeing where my heart rate is uh, in sort of correspondence I guess to what it was back in Abingdon and so I'll follow the same pattern I will do probably a, a couple of mile warm-up into Abingdon just kind of start hopefully around the 620s and then low 16s and then lock in uh, to that 555 to 6 flat pace and see where we go from there as I said later in the block there'll be some longer chunks of marathon effort this morning the marathon heart rate on those 3 by 2 k were very low I'll put the averages on screen they're in the 150s I think so it was nice and controlled um, and so yeah that's where I want them to be and if I can have them there then I know that I can push on a bit uh, during the race but if they're a little bit too high then I know that that's where I need to sit at and be a, bit, a little bit more conservative so that's where I'll be judging some of the effort and of course on the other hand you've got race results so I've got a couple of races coming up I'm not going to read too much into those because I will be I am in deep training right now and so I'm not going to be fresh for those I'm not going to taper for them yes this week will be a bit lighter but that's because I'm I'm not going to be doing a long run I'll push that into next week and then next weekend I've got the Cheltenham 10k as well um, but I won't be tapering I've done my marathon session I've got two days now or three days until that 5k so I'm not going to use those too much as a reflection but having now run sort of 1605 or whatever it was and feeling fitter than what I did in that Abingdon block and doing workouts now uh, where I feel much more controlled and quicker paces and lower heart rates than Abingdon um, and a good example of that Tuesday evening 
evening, the night before I did this workout today, I went and ran 7.49 per mile, an average heart rate of 125, which again is absolutely unheard of for me. Yes, it was on the concrete, it wasn't on the trail, so that is what made a big difference, but being able to run sub eight minute miles at that lower heart rate, the effort level was just, it was absolutely insane. So I know that fitness is there. I know I'm in the best place I've been in. It's about controlling that as we go through the block. So I feel confident that I can work to those paces. I feel like they're realistic paces. Some of you have already said uh, via email or in Instagram messages or in even in some of the comments that I should be pushing closer to 235. I'd love to give that a go at some stage. I feel like I really need to lock in my fueling. I've nearly got it. I just need to manage to get that last gel on board. If I can get that last gel on and hold on for those last few miles, then I don't see why it couldn't be possible at Abingdon at the end of the day if I end up kicking on. But uh, I'm gonna set a good goal of 236 to 238 this time around uh, with the aim hopefully to kick on next year. So we go, I hope that makes sense as to how I'm calculating my marathon effort. I hope that helps you maybe look back at some heart rate data, power data some of you use, and of course previous race results and previous marathon results. It's always good to look at those and see how fit you are in this block compared to what you are in the previous one. A few thank yous as always to you guys for watching, really, really appreciate it. And of course to say Sky, if I move here and point here, you'll see FOD Runner 15 appear on screen so grateful for them and of course the five companies that support me x miles your one-stop nutrition shop again fod 10 discount code in the description below gets you 10 percent off pure sport again using their muscle bar and freeze roll magnesium and uh yeah link in the description below for that and of course their electrolytes that's the other thing i was trying to think of ketone iq still taking that daily 30 percent off your first subscription box really grateful for them noble pro treadmills 4% off those in the description below if you're looking for a treadmill this winter and of course body light gear who will provide you guys with your reflective gear needs in those darker mornings and evenings. Once again, 10% off in the description below. That's it from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider giving it a like, share it with your friends and of course, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and I'll see you on the next one.